from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I am a golden god! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Look at this story. <laughs> I am blown away. It's about General Motors. Have you seen this? This version of the story from Reuters. General Motors Corporation has unveiled an unusually frank advertising campaign acknowledging General Motors now. Acknowledging it had disappointed and sometimes even betrayed American consumers as it lobbies to clinch the federal aid it needs to stay afloat in the next month. The print advertisement marked a sharp break from GM's public stance of just several weeks ago when it sought to justify its bid for a U.S. government on the grounds that a U.S. I'm sorry, a bid for U.S. government bailout. The word bailout is left out there for some reason. On the grounds that the uh, credit crisis had undermined its business in ways executives could never have foreseen. It also came as Chief Executive Rick Wagoner who has led the automaker since the year 2000, faces new pressure to step aside as GM seeks up to $18 billion in federal funding. Now, here's what the ad said. While we're still the U.S. sales leader, we acknowledge we have disappointed you. At times, we violated your trust by letting our quality fall below industry standards and our designs became lackluster. The unsigned open letter entitled... <laughs> Can you believe that? I mean, finally, GM recognizes what we've all known for decades. Finally, they see it. And that's not to say GM hasn't made quality products. They make great trucks, great SUVs. If it's big, GM makes good stuff. Macy says here, the unsigned open letter entitled GM's Commitment to the American People ran in the trade journal Automotive News, which is widely read by industry executives, lobbyists, and other insiders. In the ad, GM admits to other strategic missteps analysts and critics have said hastened its recent decline. The ad said, we have proliferated our brands and dealer network to the point where we lost adequate focus on the core U.S. market. We also biased our product mix toward pickup trucks and SUVs. GM then goes on to say in the ad that it was hit by forces beyond its control as it tried to complete a restructuring earlier this year. The ad says, despite moving quickly to reduce our planned spending by over $20 billion, GM finds itself precariously and frighteningly close to running out of cash. The failure of GM would deepen the current recession and put millions of jobs at risk, according to the ad, which also highlights the automaker's pledged restructuring and intention to begin repaying taxpayers in the year 2011. GM spokesman Greg Martin said the ad was an attempt by the automaker to present, quote, a pledge directly to the public. Martin said, we believe to, we believe we need to deliver this commitment unfiltered, since quite a bit of media commentary has not kept pace with our actual progress to transform this company. Wow! So GM placed an ad, you probably don't read automotive news, so you didn't see it. But GM now is acknowledging that it's made mistakes. And more importantly, my God, they claim they violated our trust. They, they, they now say they violated our trust. Of course, they're saying this now as they're begging and pleading for money. Now, let me just say, I have no axe to grind with General Motors. In fact... Uh, General Motors is a hallmark of American capitalism. General Motors is part of our great history as a free market society. 
as a capitalistic country. They're a symbol of capitalism. I am a dyed-in-the-wool capitalist. I don't want to see General Motors go out of business or any company go out of business, especially one with that kind of heritage, that kind of history, and uh, that employs that many people. I'm not happy to see General Motors squirming and begging. I I'm not happy to see that. Well, by the same token, General Motors now acknowledges what many people have been saying for years. Their quality fell below industry standards. That's their own words. Their designs became lackluster. But come on, anybody who saw these cars in the 70s knows that was true, and it was true a long time ago. And they've been playing catch-up with the Japanese and the Germans and now the Koreans ever since. Sad to see it. I really am sad to see it. I still think they make a kick-ass truck and a kick-ass SUV. I do. And nobody wants to see them survive more than I do. Except I've been opposed to bailing them out. Now that they have admitted these things in this ad, now that they've admitted, <laughs> I, and I still can't believe it, that they've disappointed and even betrayed American consumers. That they have violated our trust. That their quality fell below industry standards and their designs became lackluster. That they had too many brands. That their dealer network uh, proliferated to a point where they felt they lost adequate focus on the U.S. market. And on and on and on. Now that they've admitted that, do you feel any differently towards GM? Do you think they ought to get the bailout money they're asking for? I want to see them survive, but I want to see them do it on their own. I do not want to bail them out. But uh, does this ad and do these admissions, I was going to say admissions of guilt, they're not accused of committing any crimes, but they certainly uh, over the years have been criticized and have uh, just turned a blind eye to the criticism. Now that they are admitting all of these things, I'm wondering if you feel differently, and I wonder if that makes you any more likely to support the bailout of General Motors. I, I want to know. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. I, General Motors, place an ad in the automotive news. They say they've disappointed us. They violated our trust. They let their quality fall below industry standards. Their designs became lackluster. What do you think about that? Does it make you feel any better about General Motors and letting the money? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I was calling to add that I agree with you, but I think one thing we are overlooking is that the network General Motor has was also ripping off the consumer. And the way they were ripping off the consumer was that they were adding uh, to the financing, 84-month financing and 72-month financing. And when you would walk into a dealership, they would say, well, you know, we'll get you the car for 20 Two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars your payment, but we can finance you only for seventy two months. And they very well know statistically that a consumer will be tired of their car after thirty six months. And when the consumer rolled back in, they would add all that extra financing back in and roll it. And they rolled the American consumer so much that he's so much in debt that he cannot go out and buy a car again. Well, uh, you know, again, they, there are various ways people have been upset at the car dealers and the car manufacturers. And uh, this uh, just happens to be a company that a lot of people have anger towards. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, they, 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 it looks like now they're going to pass a smaller bailout package, by the way. 
But uh, what do you think about all this? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. You know, I can take the emotion out of this. As a small business owner, if you go and you go through the Small Business uh, Administration to get a loan, you have to present a business plan. And you're going to show on paper why this loan is going to work. It's I, I look at it as a bailout as you're giving them a gift. This should be a loan. They're going to pay it back with the interest, and they're going to show on paper why it's going to work. And if it won't work, then they don't get the money. Well, uh, here's what they're going to do. They're going to call it a loan. Uh, but, of course, we all know that's a moot point. If the company goes bankrupt, we're going to get nothing back. Right. And just as if you go to a bank, a bank looks at this. Is this a, a good gamble, for lack of a better phrase? Right. I, am I going to get back? I'm going to get back interest. The higher the risk, the more interest I'm going to charge. And it's nothing less than that. I don't care about a deceit, deceit or anything. It's a business risk, and it's a business decision. Chris, good points. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, got a suggestion. Yes. Okay. When they did uh, Saturn was a new branch of GM, a new mindset, all this, and it looked pretty good. And there was a pricing structure. And I didn't buy any Saturns, but, you know, basically it was supposed to be a no-haggle situation, whatever. Takes the guesswork out of what you're paying for the car. How could they engineer uh, a a takeover or a public a public uh, 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 positioning in this company where people would know very transparently what's going on in the company? They know that they're getting a better product than they were getting before. They know what they're going to pay for it. That's that to me is the only way I would buy GM. Well, that's not going to happen. In fact, uh, one of the things they're talking about is either. Uh, trying to sell Saturn or put it out of business, just uh, fold it. Mm. The one uh, the one shining star in their, uh, I don't know, it, 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 I wouldn't buy. I, you, you couldn't pay me to buy a GM product at this point, obviously. Well, uh, Saturn is not the original concept anyway. I mean, many of the cars sold by Saturn are now cars sold in Europe uh, that manufactured by Opel. The platform. Yeah, uh, and they just uh, uh, they put a Saturn badge on it, right? Sob. Hmm? Yeah. Well, keep up the good work, Dad. Son, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. And this is Bobby on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. How are you? I'm okay, son. Hey, you know what? I I listen all the time, Father. And you know what? If if I was very close to going back and buying a GM car because I, I just went through a layoff. I worked for a pharmaceutical company. And, you know, luckily I was fortunate to keep my job. But if I go back and buy a GM car after what they said, isn't that kind of go, like going back to an ex-girlfriend who said she cheated on me? Yeah, I know I got fat. Give me another chance. Well, it is kind of like that. I mean, why did they wait so long uh, to admit that they've disappointed so many? No, exactly. It doesn't make it any any better that now they're admitting it. It's like, all right, you guys took all our money and just basically used us for how many years now? Yep, very, very good point. Kai on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom? Kai, yes. I just want to say that I am completely against this bailout. I was reading in Monday's Wall Street Journal. They were stating how the UAW, Detroit Labor, including benefits, they get paid 70 plus dollars an hour. For non-Detroit, their um, benefits, their wages is barely $40 an hour. Unless UAW lowers their wages and benefits, I'm completely against this bailout. Well, uh, to, to be fair, UAW uh, has agreed to reopen the contract and to look at it. And I, I don't want to be unfair about this. Uh, UAW uh, has not uh, been steadfast, has not uh, been intransigent, uh, intransigent. They know General Motors and the others are in trouble. And they've agreed to look at that. Now, we'll see how much actually is done, but they've agreed to look at it. Just look at, like, there was um, stuff released today stating about, like, the 9%, 5% um, 
loans that we're giving them, there has been no mention of any reductions right. in labor in labor wages. Something needs to be in there. Or else this is just a complete bailout. Well, I, I, I certainly hope that it is not going to be like the bank bailout where they didn't require the banks to do anything. And I'm also against the bank bailout. I hear the state of Illinois now is refusing to do business with Bank of America until they start loaning money to a particular local businessman who was not able to get a loan. Maybe Bank of America should move to another state. Stop doing business with them. They're going to need Bank of America more than the state of Illinois. Yeah, we're going to find out. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hey, what's up, Tom? How's it going? It's going okay. I got a kind of a crazy idea. Just kind of thought of it. You know, there's a lot of people in this country, like you, you just said you care about this, you know, GM. They've been around a long time. It's just kind of a staple of America, almost. And I, I personally drive an American car myself. So let's say there's how many people in this country? Three, four hundred million, something like that? We're closer to three hundred million. Three yeah. to 350, yeah. Yeah, right around there. So let's say... You know, they should take out donations is what they should do with any everybody who cares about them. Say they don't get the full amount. Maybe they even they only get 100 million people to donate, say, 10 bucks. There's a billion dollars they can... Maybe they ought to have, do. like, a telephone. Yeah. Yeah, they, they really should. With all the crazy people who watch, you know, American Idol, they can run a commercial right in through there. Won't you help? <laughs> Thank you, Jason. No problem. Appreciate the call. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I've worked in the auto repair industry for 25 years, and I always joked around with people saying that GM provided me with job security from all the junk that they build. So they kind of dug their own grave. They did it to themselves. What do you think about this ad they placed in the automotive news? I think it's pretty um, outrageous, and I kind of knew that all along. I have customers that have bought American cars, then they go buy a Toyota or a Lexus. They say, I'll never buy another American car. The GM products are getting better, but they're still way behind. And like you said, they're playing catch-up, and they got a long way to go. Steve, thank you for that. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Aloha, Tom. Aloha. Uh, you're doing good work out there, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Just wanted to say, um, I'm... I'm kind of concerned why so many Americans are, are even worried about bailing out these massive corporations because, one, they don't have a say in any of it uh, whatsoever, and, two, um, the people who are concerned about GM being bailed out and do their apology. I mean, first of all, those people, most of those people are, are well aware of, of the quality of GM. Anybody can look up their ratings on ConsumerReports.com for the last 10 years and see they make many inferior vehicles, not to mention many of them have been recalled. So apologizing um, is, is nice of them, I would say, but anybody who's been supporting them this long is well aware of their faulty products. Uh, secondary to that, when the banks were awarded this huge sum of money, there was no offer, as you mentioned earlier, of them paying any of it back. And it seems that nobody seemed to have a problem with a sum 10 times greater than what GM's receiving without a single payback. And everybody seems to have a problem with GM receiving this amount of money when they're at least offering to pay it back, which, um, ironically, they probably won't. But at the same time, at least, at least the offer is there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I personally, and I've been uh, consistent on this, I'm not in favor of the government bailing any business out at all. At Dang. all. Full agreement with you on that. At all. I, I believe that uh, if you uh, take a risk by investing in the wrong company and uh, the, the company goes down in flames, that's what risk is all about. And that's the chance anybody's taking when they're gambling with, you know, huge sums of money, such as these companies are. And, and the reason that people take these outrageous risks is their belief that we will come bail them out when they when they fail. And I guess this is the situation at hand um, with this banking bailout is exactly what's proving that. So it's kind of like they handed out the money and now everybody else is expecting a piece of it, seeing that they're willing to do it. And I think it's just going to follow suit with any large corporation. That was the beginning of it, and who knows where it'll end. Josh, thank you for that. General Motors placed an ad in Automotive News, and among the things they admitted in the ad, they disappointed the American people. They violated our trust. They let their quality fall below industry standards. Their designs became lackluster. They admitted they had too many brands, too many dealers. 
Uh, they admitted that they biased their product line towards pickup trucks and SUVs. And on and on and on. The idea is to make you feel better about lending them billions of dollars. Does it make you feel better about GM to know they placed an ad like that? Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Now we're six days a week here in LA on ninety seven one FM Talk. Here our Saturday show, two to six PM every Saturday. Shorter commercial breaks, more phone calls, take them faster. Goddamn shows like a pinball machine, for Christ's sake. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Isaac on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, Tom, what's happening, man? Not much. All right, all right. Hey, man, so I don't think they should be bailed out, man. The honest truth is, um, you know, capitalism is, is a, in a sense, uh, survival of the fittest, man, and they just haven't evolved. They haven't come across with any innovative ideas that that are really, you know, the designs are horrible, and, and I, I don't want to drive one. So um, they, they place this ad. Now they're taking, they feel like they're taking responsibility. They're, uh, uh, you know, do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but that's kind of like, you know, you you know people do it all the time after they, you, you commit a crime or, you you know, they, they want a, a little slap on the wrist, man. I think they just need to take it. You know, they, they made mistakes. They haven't evolved. They haven't changed. They, they, they're bringing nothing new to the table. I mean, Apple kind of revamped their whole thing, man. And look, people are eating it like candy. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 I do. I, by the way, I agree with you. I'm not in favor of the bailout. I want to um, see GM survive, but I don't want to use taxpayer money to bail them out. Absolutely. I think they, they, they need to come up with some innovative ideas to put themselves back on the map and to make some changes that way. They, they should expect, uh, you know, average people like us to, to fork over our cash to help them out when, when they've been the ones, you know, uh, benefiting from, 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 t- Ton of tons of profits. You know, I, I, it's ridiculous. Thank you, Isaac, for the call. I appreciate it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, look at this collection of calls here. It's Abe on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I'm a wholesaler up here in Portland, Oregon, and I was just at my Chevy to deal, dealer today, and he handed me a note. There's some very interesting uh, facts on it. It was. Uh, Actually, from the New York Times, I believe, it was after September 11th. It showed uh, all the automakers and what they had done for the survivors of September 11th. And all top three, the big three, Ford, uh, GM, and Dodge, all had donated $10 million each, uh, along with um, trucks for the firefighters. Harley-Davidson had donated a $1 million and 30 motorcycles for the firefighters. And as you went down the list, they showed Honda and Toyota, who had record-breaking months the months be- uh, the month before September 11th, and all they did was uh, on their website set a condolence to the American people, and I, I just think that kind of shows, you know, not saying that the bill. I just want to. This is a national show, and I just want people, you know, to understand that they did give back to our country when we were in need, and you know, it is a big part of our country, and I don't want people to forget that at all. All right, but uh, again, and uh, never forget also that uh, any time a company, and I'll include any company I've ever worked for, uh, does something charitable, um, it is not just to be charitable because companies answer to their shareholders. Uh, They do it because it's good business, because being perceived as helping the community ultimately benefits the company. Yes. So to pretend that they are some kind of a charity like World Vision or <laughs> the United Way uh, it would, would not be properly representing what happens. Uh, very nice that the big three contributed money after 9-11. I'll be happy to reimburse them. Yeah, well, but I, 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 I don't would, think they I deserve would. to get 25 or 31 or $34 billion uh, because of that. Yes, sir. And then I just I had one quick question. I was watching. They had... So as I was at the dealership, they had uh, one of the the head CEO from Merrill Lynch on, and he was asking for a ten million dollar bonus. Did you hear about that? No, although I, I know there are some crazy bonuses on Wall Street. I didn't know about that. I I was just on the on the TV today. It was like me. It was like on a I don't know what it was. It was a 
press or uh, gosh, what do you call it? Um, like a Fox. I don't know if it was Fox or CNN, but it was one of those. And they were they had the CEO. He was asking for a ten million dollar bonus because of the work that he had put in over the past months when the Merrill Lynch wasn't making any money. How do you feel about that? I mean, I know you, you don't. You don't agree with these bailouts at all, but I just think the audacity to have one CEO who everybody obviously doesn't like at this point come on there and say something like that, it was baffling to me, especially when everything else is going on. Abe, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number. Here is John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's Okay. Well, I, I guess my question is, uh, why are we leaving it up to them to decide uh, whether to bail them out or not? And uh, since it's our money, the taxpayers' money, why not do like a proposition across the United States, basically, asking uh, the Americans, us, the people, if we want to bail them out or not? Well, they don't ask you because uh, this is a representative form of government. And once you've voted them in, they stand or fall by what they do. I mean, they don't ask us about pretty much anything. Do they ask you if you wanted to go to war with Iraq? <laughs> well, I'll agree with that. Uh, I, ju I just think that, uh, well, they're making such a big stink about uh, now $15 billion versus the, seven. what was it, uh, 750 or uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, for the banks. So why not ask well, us about that? Well, $700 billion for the banks. <laughs> what was it? $700 billion. E Exactly. So uh, why not leave it up to us? Oh, I agree. They should leave it up to us. <laughs> and you know what would happen? All the three million uh, workers who would be affected uh, by the uh, big three going under would vote yes to the bailout. And the other 120 million American adults would vote no. <laughs> well, I think that should uh, raise the, the answer right there, then. Right. But, of course, our government doesn't work that way and will not work that way. And uh, I believe me, the politicians who are in there will get their pound of flesh uh, not just uh, in that the car companies will change the way they do business, but more importantly, when it comes time to be reelected, I hope to get the United Auto Workers to look kindly upon them and other people who would be affected by not bailing the car companies out. 1-800-5800-TOM. Henry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom. How hey. are you? This is Henry. I'm glad you got me. First time caller. Doing Always okay. Always a wrestling brawler. Thank you. Hey, listen, I don't believe in this uh, bailout in any way, shape, or form with the banks, the the GM or anything, and I think they should go into bankruptcy, break the union contract, and start, you know, revamping their business plan and really becoming a profitable entity. Well, I, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I think uh, companies should stand or fall on their own merit. Um, you know, it's one thing if a company is directly uh, affecting the security of the nation. Uh, that would be one thing. For example, if somebody was building tanks or bombers and uh, uh, they were the one and only company that was building them and they were about to go under, we might have to have that debate. Uh, but when it comes to a, uh, uh, let's face it, a discretionary pur purchase like an automobile, uh, the security of our country is uh, going to have nothing to do with uh, whether or not we can buy a Ford Focus. Right. And I think that once they do revamp and get it, I think the uh, folks of America should could get behind them and stop buying foreign-made uh, cars and start supporting them once they get the right uh, cars out. No, but the question is, will they ever do that? And uh, well, that's I, what I hope for. I, I, you know what? I hope for it too. But um, I'm also hoping Santa Claus is coming to town. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Curtis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, uh, Tom. I was curious to know how this affects Chevy or if it affects Chevy in any way. I don't think Chevy is likely to disappear in a scenario like this because uh, uh, General Motors would get rid of Pontiac before they get rid of Chevy or Buick. Okay. Uh, I think Chevy is one of the stronger divisions of GM, if not the strongest. And now, isn't, aren't some of the, um, the materials made, um, you know, within the same realm? What do you mean? Uh, meaning, uh, aren't aren't they produced or manufactured by the same companies? They look the same. What I'm saying, the vehicles look the same. Which vehicles are we talking about? They talk about the trucks versus the yeah, exactly. small cars, or what? I'm talking about the trucks. Well, I uh, again, I don't know who the parts suppliers are for each division. I don't know because I'm not privy to their contracts and what have you. 
Uh, but I do believe, again, that uh, Chevy has much worse performing divisions than... Uh, I'm sorry, GM has much worse performing divisions than Chevrolet. A uh, Buick being one of them. Oh, I... I mean, when's the last time you saw somebody under 60 in a Buick? Not very often. Right. So I think uh, Buick is kind of in that category that Oldsmobile was in a few years ago. Oh. Uh, I mean, other, right. than, other than Paul Harvey, who's talking about Buick these days? Uh-huh. <laughs> who's Paul Harvey? Exactly my point. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? First time caller. Going okay. Um, I had a I had an idea for this. Um, the government is actually not a lending institution. I had an idea. Why don't they have some of these banks deal with the three car companies and lending the money, and they can use part of that seven hundred billion that was that's going to be given to them free of charge. Well, because I think we all know that the banks have no intention of lending that money out. They intend to sit on it or use it for uh, acquisitions. Uh, we're already seeing examples of the banks not lending money, even though they've been given uh, access to this cash. They call it the TARP funds. And uh, we're already seeing that the banks are not lending that money out. And credit is still pretty much frozen. You know, there's still, there's still what, $400 billion left that they have to give out? Um, it's more than that. I think the I, government, frankly, uh, should have told uh, the banks, uh, you're only getting this money if you demonstrate to us that you've let it out or we're taking it back. Right. I mean, I don't understand why there were no st stipulations there, but anyways. Uh, because uh, it was politicians who've been robbing us blind for years who are going to rob us blind on this deal as well. Yeah. Well, good talking to you, Tom. I'm sure it was. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. General Motors, a mea culpa. In the automotive news, they placed an ad admitting to all kinds of faults and flaws. Does this make you more amenable to a government bailout? Tom, like it, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom So GM admits in an ad in the automotive news to some faults, even deception. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to uh, Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. So I was thinking, because I've been following this whole GM thing for a few years now, they have too many brands with too many cross-platform vehicles, and they need to cut the fat. They need to get rid of Buick. They need to take Chevy and only have pickup trucks and SUVs in Chevy, except for the Corvette, because that's an American classic. All of the Saturns should be all of their midsize and small economy cars. Don't have Chevy carry economy cars. Don't have Daewoo carry economy cars. Put them all under Saturn. Keep all their sports cars under Pontiac. Get rid of Oldsmobile all together now. And keep all their European things in Europe. Well, uh, there's a variety of opinions on how they should restructure themselves. Uh, but their immediate problem is they say they're going to run out of cash in a month or two. Well, the reason why they're running out of cash is because people go to GM to buy a car. And then they see that there's four different brands that GM has. They have the exact same car for all four brands, and they don't know which one to pick, so they end up going and buying a Ford. So if they just got rid of all the cross-platform vehicles, badged everything the same, cut down on production costs, because then they wouldn't have to make all these different bumpers or fenders for all the different model cars, even though it's the same engine, drivetrain, suspension. Well, badge. if they're going to do that, they need to strip out all the layers of management. They go with each badge that they have. Yeah, it's true also. Part of their problem is they got layers and layers and layers of executives. Yeah, I'm looking on their website right now, and they have 15 different automotive brands. It's ridiculous. 15. That's insane. Is anybody buying Hummers anymore? <laughs> no. Yeah. 
Yeah, they stopped making the H1, which was the only good Hummer anyways. And that thing got, what, like one highway, you know, zero city. <laughs> you mean one gallon to the mile? Yeah, exactly. I mean, those <laughs> things are ridiculous. The only people that need those are, like, hunters in Alabama and the military, and that's it. Not a not a driving car. It's like a Ferrari. Hey, so hunters, in Alabama, hunters in Alabama have needs too. For God's sake, Todd on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Hey, two two things I wanted to point out. One is uh, while GM was developing the Hummer, uh, Toyota was busy developing a little thing called Prius. So I, I think that's worth knowing. The other thing is that uh, you had a caller a little while ago who indicated that uh, the Detroit Three had given so much to uh, relief efforts around 9-11. And the reality is the only difference between the Detroit 3 and uh, Toyota, for example, is that Toyota didn't crow about their contribution. They gave. They gave quietly. You can look it up. It's on the website for the American Red Cross. So I just wanted to uh, clarify that one guy. Good point, Todd. Thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Ken on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, just wanted to say that, you know, the, the resolution of this problem is this. GM is, they're in the hole. They need a business plan. The other automakers need a business plan before we give them any money whatsoever. And also, we need to look at the salaries of the executives as well. The other thing that we need to do to protect our workers, which you may not agree with, is as far as the imports are concerned, you're talking to somebody who's driven. Uh, I bought several Toyotas, and right now I'm driving in a Chevrolet and Paul. I know it's a it's a bad car, but I drive a lot of miles, and I've got almost fifty thousand miles on it. And I've only had one minor problem. But you and just called it a bad car, and. And it's a bad car because it's not real exciting. It's like driving a washing machine down the street. But for $17,000 out the door, what would I expect? But what we need to do is put tariffs, on, and I mean big tariffs, on these foreign cars. Because Why? We, we, because we don't have a balance of trade. You know, how many cars are we sending overseas, to, for example, to Japan? Yeah, but is how that is that because uh, of, of trade barriers, or is that because we do not make cars that are to the liking? Or the desires of people in other countries. Regar regardless. No, no, regard that's a very important question. You can't say regardless to that. If we make cars, for example, several American car companies refuse to put the driver's side uh, where the passenger side goes in countries where where they drive on the the, the right-hand side of the road. I'm sure they'd do it if the demand was there, if they could sell the cars. But the point is that... But why do you think the demand isn't there? I mean, and by the way, let me explain something to you. Go ahead. You know, I've traveled a lot. And when I'm in Europe, believe me, all around me, it's Coca-Cola and McDonald's and Starbucks. People have no objection to buying American products. And they do. The, the reason Europeans don't buy American cars is the same reason Americans don't buy American cars. Okay, so so we'll agree. So what? I, we should punish. We should punish people because they're they're consumers. They have taste. We should punish them for that. Well, I don't know if they're being punished, but if we didn't have well, why well, what people are the reason people buy foreign cars is because they believe they're getting a better deal. Okay, so let's assume that the United States does not manufacture any cars whatsoever. What do you think is going to happen to our economy? Well, again, I mean, the suppliers, everybody involved down the line, what are we going to do? We're going to support all these other com countries by buying their products? And then the U.S. Well, I mean, uh, we, um, I think the American people buy the best products for the lowest possible price. Well, that's that's great now you want to change that. That, well, that, that's great in a perfect world, but what about... So you want to change that. You want to tell people, all right, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the price of the products you love so much so that you'll be uh, stimulated to buy products you don't like so much. Well, that that helps our country, though. That's the point. I don't. It helps our... a very small part of our country. There's 3 million people in the automobile industry who are employed, and, and there's 300 million people in America. What about the parts suppliers and everybody that, else? That 3 million with... includes the parts suppliers. 
Well, and I, I might I, add that, that, that people automatically say that three million people are going to lose their jobs. Well, guess what? Those parts suppliers are going to be supplying parts. Sure, they are because what, Toyota makes cars here, uh, because Nissan makes cars here, uh, because other manufacturers, Hyundai makes cars here, and they're going to be making those parts for other companies. That's what they're going to be doing. Their profits going to those other countries, though. They're not staying in the United States. Well, I, I got to tell you something. Uh, first of all, you can buy stock in any one of those companies. That's true, but I mean, as a stockholder, you're not going to make that much money. But as, as far as a worker goes, in creating jobs, and as a result, well, what of those about the jobs, people who work in Tennessee? As a, as a result of those jobs, the people who work in Tennessee products. for Toyota, they're 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 not Japanese; they're Americans. Well, the, the Toyota is all Americans. I didn't say you, it's all Americans. I said the people who work in Tennessee for Toyota are Americans. They're I not Japanese. That, they're Americans. But, but they're they're making chump change compared to the profit that the company's making. Well, that's true of auto workers in every company. Well, maybe except for the ones that are going under, like the American. Well, ones, they're think, going under because I, of how much the workers have made over the years. I think the the problem is I realize that the quality might not be there, and but it's not that bad. The quality like say, isn't I, there, so we I, should punish people and raise the price of the cars they do want to buy, so that they will then buy the cars they don't want to buy. I don't know if they're being punished. I think if they want it bad enough, they'll pay for it. Like I said, I've had I bought six new Toyotas myself. And I've also bought a Dodge Intrepid. I bought a Chevrolet Impala. I bought three Camaros. Okay, so I bought that. I've got a Ford F one fifty truck. What is all it's, that? I'm not being punished. What but is I'm, all all yeah, I'm you are. I would, I would rather have. No, I'm not. I would rather have the money stay in the United States for our people. Well, then why are you buying any? Why are you buying any cars from other countries? Why? That was years ago when I did. But the reason I was buying them is because I was buying the one only. Dealer, the one that the lost leader. I was driving for two years. Well, and well still the profits are the profits are going to other countries. I realize that. Well, you have no problem with that, do you? That was then. Now this is now. Oh, we're so you now. stopped. So you we're, stopped buying we're, foreign but cars. But we're hurting now. That's why. Uh huh. I'm trying to help our people, yeah. and I don't care if I have to buy a Chevrolet and Paula. For seventeen thousand dollars, as opposed to a Toyota Camry or an Avalon, or what have you. But if it is my country, I'm fine with it. Well, for me, I'm helping myself, and I'm going to buy the best car at the best price, whoever makes it. And I have no prejudice. I have an open mind. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likes Show.